you can actually get gout inside your Achilles tendon. And it can be really difficult to tell the difference. So often people are misdiagnosed with Achilles tendonitis when in fact they've got gout and then the treatment doesn't work. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how you can tell the difference between Achilles tendonitis and gout and also what you can do about it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for any type of Achilles injury, all done via video call. Have a look at the description of this video if you want to link to our website. Gout is an extremely painful condition that develops when urate crystals forms either in your joints or your tendons. Why does this happen? Urate crystals forms when uric acid levels in your blood is too high and uric acid forms from purines, which is a substance that you naturally find in your body as well as some foods. Normally, uric acid isn't a problem. Your kidneys just get rid of it for you via your urine. But for some people, their genetic makeup means that they can't get rid of the uric acid so well or they produce a lot more of it. There's also some chronic diseases like kidney disease that affects your kidneys that prevents you from getting rid of it so quickly. And when this happens and the uric acid gets too high, you get those crystals that can cause so much pain and inflammation. So how can you tell the difference between Achilles tendonitis and gout in your Achilles tendon? Well, there are three main things that can give you clues about this. And one is family history. Second is how the injury started. And thirdly is about how the symptoms react. So if we look at the family history and your own medical history, um, if you've got gout, chances are somebody else in your family has had gout before. So if you can think back of your granddad, your grandma, and ask your parents about it, because it's a genetic condition, it's not as if you're gonna be the only island in the family suddenly having gout. So if somebody else in the family has had gout, that may mean that you're prone to it as well. Now, just because you have family history of gout, or perhaps you've even been diagnosed with gout in the past, does not mean that I'm immediately gonna say your Achilles tendon pain is gout, because it could just be Achilles tendonitis as well. This is just something that I file in my, in my mind while I'm having a conversation with a patient as a high suspicion. So then I move on to listening to how the injury actually started and the symptoms to decide whether I'm gonna pay the suspicion any further attention or whether, no, we can ignore that, this is likely not gout. So if we look at how the injury started, Achilles tendonitis is an overuse injury. You cannot get Achilles tendonitis from just sitting on the couch, or most people can't, unless you have a disease process that causes it. Um, you have to do an activity that overloads or overworks the Achilles to get it. Now, sometimes the activity is quite obvious, like you took up a new sport, or you just walked a lot more than normal, or you increased your running training a lot, or perhaps you didn't allow enough recovery between hard training bouts. Sometimes it can be a little bit more subtle, like you may think, but I've just walked as much as normal, but it could be that you actually wore flatter shoes because flatter shoes will cause the Achilles to stretch more and work more than normal. And if you're not used to flat shoes, then suddenly switching to them can actually overload the Achilles tendon. So we've made a whole video about causes about Achilles tendonitis, which may be useful for you to watch. So I'll put a link to that in the description of this video as well. But yes, there's usually a link to exercise and it doesn't have to, the Achilles tendon doesn't have to become painful while you're exercising. It's often actually the next morning that you wake up with it, put your foot to the floor and you go, oh my word, what's going on with my Achilles? So it can be a delayed response, but you have to be able to tie it to something like that. With gout, it just usually happens out of the blue. And quite often people will wake up at night going, oh my word, my Achilles is so painful. So there's usually not a clear link to any um, activity that you've done. It may even be that actually you did less than before. You were just sitting around for ages or you had a long period where you traveled, were stuck in a car, stuck in a plane, and you couldn't move a lot, so decreased circulation. That can actually increase the chances of gout because your blood circulation reduces then. So that's a big difference between the two. If you did absolutely nothing and you suddenly have this severe pain, then we're really starting to think, okay, this could be an inflammatory condition. And by the way, gout is one type of inflammatory condition. It could be something else as well, but we'll make other videos about that later. 
gout produces a massive inflammatory reaction, which means that it becomes, the area becomes quite swollen, it can become red, it can be quite hot to the touch. The pain is extreme. So yes, at the beginning, it may just feel like a niggle, but it usually escalates quite quickly to the point where even just having a bed sheet on it or touching it lightly can feel excruciating. And also, if you try to move and walk, it just stays the same level of pain. It doesn't really decrease with that. Um, whereas with Achilles tendonitis, yes, it can be painful, but it's not nearly the same level of pain. It definitely doesn't wake you up at night. Achilles tendonitis is only usually that you feel it when you try to walk or do activities on it. So typically when you've sat still for a long period of time or slept during the night and you try to give those first few steps, the Achilles tendon can feel really stiff and tight and painful if it's tendonitis. But then as you get moving, there's a little bit of a warming up effect and your tendon starts to feel better as you go. Also, if your tendon's not that injured and you do sports, there's often that period where at the beginning you think, ah, oh, actually, after five minutes, my Achilles is feeling better, but then the pain may come back again. So big difference there. It doesn't wake you up at night where gout wakes you up at night and Achilles tendonitis, usually the pain and stiffness improves as you move, whereas with gout, it doesn't. Also with Achilles tendonitis, if you put your foot into a shoe that has a slightly higher heel than toe, then you tend to be able to walk around without much discomfort. Whereas gout, it may work a little bit perhaps, but it often doesn't make that big a difference. Also, Achilles tendonitis doesn't really cause any redness or swelling or warmness to the touch when you have it. Bursitis can cause those symptoms. So just because it's warm uh, to the touch and swollen doesn't mean it has to be gout. It could also be bursitis, um, but definitely not Achilles tendonitis. So if you want to know more about bursitis and what typical symptoms are of that, then you, we've made a whole video about that as well. I'll put a link to that one as well in the comments or in the description of this video. If we suspect that you've got gout or some other type of inflammatory condition, we'll then refer you to your GP or your general practitioner doctor first so that they can investigate it further and combine it with medications and things if needed before we, we decide to start any rehab for the Achilles tendon. If you're finding this information useful, please remember to like and subscribe. It will help our channel reach more people who can benefit from this. How can your doctor actually test for gout to diagnose you? Well, they will first also take a thorough history and try and understand what your symptoms are to decide what the best tests are and whether gout is even on the table. And they may send you for blood tests. And the usual thing they test for is the levels of uric acid in your blood. Because usually when you've got gout, your uric acid levels will be elevated. But bizarrely enough, there is research that shows that for quite a large portion of people, when they're ha having an acute gout attack, their uric acid levels is actually lower than normal or within normal range. And they think it's because during that acute attack, a lot of the um, uric acid is settling down in the form of crystals in the tissue. So that brings the blood levels down. So the blood tests aren't 100% accurate. If the blood test comes back negative, but your doctor is quite sure that there is active inflammation or inflammatory process present because you can see it's warm, hot, all the symptoms, they may place you on anti-inflammatory medication in any case to just bring that process down. They may also send you for an ultrasound scan of the Achilles tendon because that can show you whether there's any changes in the tendon that fits with the tendonitis or whether something can actually show up that fits more with the inflammatory condition like gout. Depending on the stage of gout you're in, it may show different things. So if you look at these pictures, the top one, there's very subtle extra white lines in the tendon. And those are typical for acute gout attack where you've got the crystals kind of settling down in a line on the, um, on the tendon fibers. But then in the bottom, you can see there's little round pockets and that's more typical of somebody with chronic gout where there's pockets of crystals that form inside the tendon. If you also have joints that's flared up with gout or suspected gout at that point, and they're struggling to make a diagnosis, they're not quite sure about what's going on, they may draw some of the fluid to get that assessed as well. But usually that's not a first line of investigation because as soon as you put a needle into something, you can actually introduce infections and stuff. So they tend to leave it until they really need to do it if they're unclear about what's going on. 
Now, you may be looking at those scan images and thinking, well, does this mean that gout is going to damage my Achilles tendon? Luckily, the research is showing no. It doesn't look as if gout actually causes any permanent damage or structural damage to the tendon. Um, a couple of studies have confirmed that when they look at patients with even chronic gout, they can see the, the pockets of the crystals, but there's no structural changes in that tendon. Now, a recent study, they looked at the tendon stiffness. You can measure tendon stiffness through a special type of ultrasound machine that sends shear waves through the tendon to see how stiff the tendon is. I know everybody's always thinking that flexibility is good, but actually for the Achilles tendon, a more stiffer tendon tends to be a healthier tendon. Um, and what they found with the gout patients was that, yeah, the guys who had gout compared to the people who didn't have gout actually had a softer tendon. Now, it's easy to interpret that as the tendon wasn't as strong or it was actually damaged compared to the, the control group. But the problem is we know that people who do sport and work the Achilles tendon often also have stiffer Achilles tendons than people who lead a sedentary lifestyle and don't do a lot of activity. So the researchers didn't unfortunately report on how active the people were in the gout group compared to the people who weren't in the gout group. So it may just be that actually because they've had gout, they weren't as active as the, as the people who didn't have gout, and that's why the tendon wasn't as stiff. But in that study also, they found, yes, they can see traces of gout, but they couldn't see any structural damage to the tendon. So just because the tendon was softer, I don't think that is necessarily linked to the gout. It may just be inactivity. So good news is it doesn't look as if you get st structural damage or permanent damage from gout. It's just about getting that gout attack under control, which leads nicely to how do you treat Achilles pain that's linked to gout? You've got a few different scenarios. You can either have only gout, or you can have gout and Achilles tendonitis, or you may not have gout and just Achilles tendonitis. So let's look at that. If we suspect you've got gout, we're sending you to your GP and they'll assess you and they'll start treatment. And you have to try treat the gout first. When you start gout treatment, you may find that your Achilles pain disappears and it feels 100% afterwards. And if that's the case, you may not even need physiotherapy or anything else um, to help that settle further because that was literally the problem. You just had gout, it had to go away. But it's possible, like I said, to also have gout plus Achilles tendonitis. So you get the gout treated, um, but then you're still stuck with some Achilles pain because of the other Achilles injury. And if that's the case, you want to treat the gout first, like I said, but then you just go into your normal Achilles rehab and ease into that once your doctor feels that your gout attack has actually settled. We've made a full video where we discuss the best evidence-based treatments for Achilles tendonitis. So if you're interested in that, check out the, the description of this video. I'll put a link to that one there. And obviously, if you have a history of gout, but this is not an acute gout attack at the moment, then we treat it as just purely an Achilles tendonitis and we don't even have to do any extra treatments for the gout in that case. So yes, your doctor may give you medications for your gout, but as part of the treatment, they may also suggest things like normal life hacks that can help reduce your uric acid levels in your blood and increase the circulation because the combination of those two things can make a big difference for avoiding gout attacks. And Sometimes it can be really simple advice that makes a big difference. So my poor boyfriend gets gout and it's really frustrating because initially, whenever we went to a nice warm country, he would end up with gout within two days. And we just assumed it was because he was eating and drinking more. But then the more we did it, because we're currently moving around and living in warm countries, we realized it had nothing to do with what he was eating and drinking. It actually had a lot more to do with sitting still for hours while on the plane and not getting good circulation, and then getting off the plane in a really hot country, not being used to drinking as much water because we're coming from Britain, and then he ends up dehydrating, so uric acid goes up because water in the blood goes down, plus poor circulation, and he ends up with gout. So now, <laughs> when we go to warm places, he just drinks a lot more water and reminds himself to have a lot more water and make sure he moves regularly and doesn't skip his runs and things like that, and hydrates properly after runs. And he's mostly able to avoid gout attacks. Also, when he gets a gout attack, when it starts to show its head, 
He's got his regime down to a T of he knows what medication to take because his doctor's given him his anti-inflammatories. So he whacks that on, he starts drinking a lot of water, he makes sure he gives his foot what it wants, which is rest at the start and then gentle movement afterwards. And then it usually settles down within a couple of days where usually it went into a bad cycle of actually staying around for a couple of weeks and just derailing all his training. So it's important to observe what impacts your gout most and trying to control those lifestyle um, things as much as you can. Of course, it's very difficult to do it perfectly. You won't be able to do it perfectly, but you can really bring your gout attacks down if you pay attention to those things as well. Brilliant, hope you found that useful. Now, remember to hit like and subscribe, and if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.